What's up everyone, Terraquake here, and welcome back to the Pokemon Black 2 walkthrough. In the last episode, we took on the Celestial Tower and got even more evolutions. Our boy Pig Knight evolved into Embor, and we also got, who was it, I think, uh, Deerling into a Salzbuck, and I just realized my speed up button was still on there for a second. So now the team is really starting to come along. Um, we only have one more evolution, which will be Cub Chew, our newest team member, somewhat soon in the game. But for now, let's take on the sixth gym. That's right. I mean, we're not even at part 30, and it's time for the sixth gym. But yeah, this is the flying type gym, and immediately you're going to notice that the wind is uh, blowing us back. And it actually blew the boy Clyde right into us. I mean, come on, that's got to hurt. That really does have to hurt. But yeah, this is a flying type gym, of course, just like how it was in black and white. But the puzzle is completely different. Um, basically, there's those ginormous fans in the back. And every couple of seconds, they're going to blow like a huge gust of wind. And you can see it right there. And if you're not on these little uh, green spots or like up against a wall, kind of like how that pilot is right now, then you are going to get blown back towards the beginning or like, you know, however far back you can go. So... You're sort of trying to work your way from, uh, you know, the the green space to green space, I guess. And this is a flying type gym, but you'll see a lot of dual typings in here. You know, some psychic flying, so like Swoobat right here. You've got some uh, normal flying types, rock flying types. You'll see a wide variety. Anyways, there is Shadow Claw right there. That's right. I went ahead and gave Shadow Claw to Garfield because um, I did go through my TMs off camera. Unfortunately, I don't have a single Ice type TM. So Cub Chew's still rocking out with only Slash and Brine. But then I gave Rock Slide to Embor over Rollout. I just didn't like getting um, locked into Rollout. And then I gave Shadow Claw to Lipard. And I believe, can we make it up here? Oh, we got just behind this little uh, windmill thing right here. But yeah, then I believe I gave, what was the other move? Oh yeah, I taught X Scissor to Crustle. Um, that was the only other thing. So let me go ahead and heal up Garfield. I also gave all of my Pokemon held items. You might have noticed there, I gave Bambi the uh, EXP share just because he's already one of the lowest levels on the team. And because we're not using him in this gym, because, well, he's a grass type, I didn't want him to fall too far behind. Um, I also gave the leftovers to Lipard, mainly because I didn't really have anything better to give it to. And then I put, like, the Mystic Water on Swanna. Other than that, I still have, like, the uh, Charcoal on Embor. I think the Hearthstone is on Crustle. And I forget the last item, but that's all right. Here's a Sigilyph, though. Don't sleep on Sigilyph. I know it's one of those mons that, like, doesn't evolve and whatnot, but this thing can be pretty darn tough, um, especially when he goes for Reflect. Now I'm kind of hoping for a crit. Come on, give me a crit, baby. Give me a crit. No, that's not going to happen. We do have a, a high crit chance with Shadow Claw, but yeah, his Shadow Claw is not going to do that much. I mean, Sigil, if you are not a physical attacker, my guy. But yeah, you can tell I'm a pretty low of a level compared to all of these gym trainers. As a matter of fact, the gym leader's ace, I believe, is level 39. And it's also a Swana, which is only quad weak to um, electric. I guess I could still hit it with a Rock-type move or something. But I don't have a single Electric-type or Electric-type move, so definitely could be a tough gym battle, but so far, you know the gym trainers have gone pretty well, and I'm actually going to take Garfield out from the front of the party. You've done a good job so far. Let's let Smokey get a chance, um, since we are about to take on an Arkin, and I'm going to sit behind, or I guess... Oh, no! <laughs> no! I moved my freaking character at the last second. Why do I do that? All right, can we make it all the way? Ooh, that was close, but we made it to the next uh, pilot. Now, luckily, the further on you get, the less likely of a chance you'll get blown back all the way to the start just because there will be more things in your way um, that are behind you. But this, uh, this last part can be a little tricky. But, you know, as long as you know where you're going, um, you've got plenty of time to sort of go from spot to spot. And you're going for Dragon Breath. I don't really like that move because I know it's just going to paralyze me. But here we go. Let's go for another Brine. Quick Guard don't matter. Brine is going to knock you out, Arkin. Shout out to the Arkin that I used over on the main channel in one of my videos. Which, if you guys aren't subbed up to the main channel, be sure to do so. We uh, recently hit 4,000 subscribers. And um, at the time I'm recording this, we're at like 4,137, I think. So, like, you know, 5,000, that's the next, like, big, big milestone, I feel like. Probably the biggest since 1,000, so that's kind of the goal we're working towards. And we're getting there, man. 
we're getting there. But yeah, be sure to check out the main channel. If you want to see more Pokemon content from me, if uh, two days a week isn't enough, then definitely check out the content over there. Anyways, um, Unfazat, yeah, you're going to get one shot. The only issue with Crustle is that it's part bug. Also, we got to level 35 right there. So I think I'm actually going to take the EXP share off of Saul's Buck and maybe put it on... Um, Cub Chew now. I just want to, you know, keep those guys close in levels to the rest of the team since they were still level 34 at the start of this episode. But yeah, as I was saying, the only problem with Crustle is it's part bug, meaning, um, oh wait, I forgot you had the Lucky Egg on. Ah, whatever. Both of them help with you getting experience, so either one works. But yeah, it's part bug, meaning flying is still uh, neutral on it, which kind of sucks. And I think I'll actually put you up to the front, though, even though I just said it kind of sucks that you're um, neutral with flying, but that's okay. I'm going to let this little gust of wind pass by, and then we can uh, sprint all the way down to this pilot. And then after this guy, we only have one more to go. So, yeah, the gym trainers have gone pretty well. And uh, we should be we should be chilling. Hopefully, I won't have to go all the way back out and heal. Also, we have Pilot Ewing right here. Yo, was that... NBA legend Patrick Ewing as a pilot didn't know he he became a pilot after he retired what a what a guy what a guy and don't waste my time going for detect Unfazant I swear it's because you're wearing that stupid mask it's because you're the boy one that's the reason you're going for detect buddy a female one probably wouldn't do that it would just go down because it knows it's gonna die to a rock slide heck yeah there we go all right, and that was that guy's only mon. So, um, looks like Krusty... Well, no, nah, I actually think I'm going to take you out from the front. I know you're close to leveling up, but he'll get some action in the gym battle. Let me put, um... You know what? Because the next Pokemon will battle is a Ducklet, I'm going to give my boy Saul's Buck a chance, and I did not make it right there. That's tough. All right, well, we'll just make a mad dash over here to this platform. And then once you get here, there's three different paths... You're going to want to take the bottom one. The other two are just dead ends, and you're kind of going to get screwed over. But here, you can run down against this wall and take on the final pilot. And then don't worry, once you get to Skyla, you know, or once you get to the back of the gym, you'll be fine. You don't have to, like, sprint to Skyla without being able to heal or anything. They wouldn't do that to you. That would only be some, like, Kaizo Pokemon. What's up with the Kaizo games, by the way? I mean, I know those became a big thing at some point. Obviously, they're like more difficult versions of like regular video games. Um, I saw something pop up in my YouTube recommendations. Kaizo Super Mario Galaxy. That seems freaking awesome. Seems like something I would want to do. If I haven't said it before, Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 are my two favorite video games of all time. And I, you know, I haven't played them in a while, but I feel like I'm pretty good with them, I think. But uh, I would love to try a Kaizo version of them because, you know, I mean, it's Nintendo. They weren't going to make Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 insanely difficult. Maybe minus the perfect run, which of course is the last level in Super Mario Galaxy 2. But um, yeah, I would love to try Kaizo Super Mario Galaxy or Kaizo Super Mario Galaxy 2. I think I saw both of them in my recommendations, which was just really sick. Um, I checked out the video. I forget who it's by. Um, I wish I remembered, but yeah, it w it looked uh, it looked really cool, and it seems like the developers or whoever made it, like you know, put stars and like items in different areas um, to make them really hard to get to and stuff like that, which is pretty darn cool. Anyways, that will do it for the gym trainers. So while I'm standing here, I'm gonna go ahead and heal up whoever needs to get healed up. Um, looks like I'll just heal up Bambi, Crustle, and a Smokey. And I'm actually going to take the EXP share off of Cub Chew since you leveled up as well. So, yeah, now everyone's at least level 35. That's fine. Um, we only have one battle left anyways. And we'll throw Garfield to the front because Skyla's first mod is actually a Swoobat. Which I will uh, sort of get into in a second. But, yeah, let's get to this red part. And now you know you are safe. And it's actually really fun to go back to the start. You stand on that little platform with the arrow right there. And you fly straight out, which is pretty cool but I'm dropping a quick save because if I'm gonna be honest this battle could go downhill you know it really could but anyways let's take on Skyla she doesn't have too much to say so let's do it so as I said she's gonna begin with a level 34 Swoobat or no I'm sorry level 37 Swoobat I, I think I was looking at the easy mode level right there but uh, yeah this thing is psychic flying so weak to you know ghost electric ice rock and all that good stuff 
It knows Acrobatics, Assurance, Attract, and Heart Stamp. Now, luckily, it can't use Attract since I'm a female. However, Acrobatics is a very strong move. It is the TM you'll get after this battle. And it's a physical flying type attack that will do double the damage if you're not holding an item. But we got a crit with Shadow Claw. Oh, Garfield. You don't even know how clutch that was right there. That was clutch because, well, okay, maybe with the leftovers we could have lived another a uh, Acrobatics. But, man, that was, wow, that was perfect. Okay, um, I will take that. Now she's going out to Swana, though, and this is the one I'm worried about the most. Um, this is her ace. It is up at level 39, and remember, just like any old gym leader's ace Pokemon, it's going to be holding a uh, Citrus Berry. This thing knows Feather Dance, Roost, Air Slash, and Bubble Beam. So on top of, like, Hyper Potions and stuff that Skyla can use, it can heal itself with Roost, and then Bubble Beam and Air Slash are really strong. And also, be careful if you're using a Physical Attacker, because um, it can hit you with Feather Dance. And luckily, we lived... This is all I wanted to do with Salzburg. I just wanted to get in here with a Leech Seed. I think that will um, definitely help us out. And yeah, honestly, I mean, Swan is very fast. I'm probably just going to have to chuck my whole team at this thing and hope for the best. Because, I mean, we have Crossel who's super effective, but remember, this thing's part water. It just really sucks. So I'm going to now get Embor out here. First time we're using Embor. Kind of feel bad because I'm basically letting him go down, but we're going to go for a Rock Slide. Remember, I taught um, Rock Slide off camera, and wow, unfortunately, it's not going to do too much now with the Feather Dance. So once again, um, Feather Dance can really screw you over if you're not careful, but it should still do a decent amount. And the Leech Seed will bring it down to yellow health. Oh, but there's that Citrus Berry. All right, I'm fine that the Citrus Berry went off. Um, let's go for another Rock Slide. There's Air Slash. Just don't flinch me, and I think I can get one more off. Yes, okay. So it stinks that we didn't outspeed just because then we could have flinched her, but it is what it is. However, um, this is kind of a perfect range of health for her because she's not going to use a Hyper Potion here. Embor will go down, but now I can go into Crustle, and it's not like... Well, actually, he could get his attack lowered. That would be the only bad thing. Um, all right, well, here we go. Please don't lower my attack. I'm honestly would rather you go for Bubble Beam. Yes, okay, that's good. Um, just as long as we don't miss Rock Slide, we should be good. All right, there we go. Nice. So we were able to just whittle that thing down and uh, take it out with Crustle. If you have an Electric-type Pokemon, you're not going to have that many problems with Swanna. It's quad weak to Electric. Um, it's weak to Rock, but again, with it being part water, it's kind of tough to get in with a Rock-type. And now out comes Skarmory. So the issue here is I was planning on actually trying to take down Skarmory with Embor, but now Embor's dead, so let's see what I can do with my other mons. Um, Skarmory is a steel flying type, so it resists a lot of typings. However, you know, it's still weak to, um, it's still weak to, what, fire and electric. So try to hit it with those two typings. It's a level 37, those air cutter, agility, steel wing, and fury attack. And, oh, come on, I just want you to take out Lipard. I really just got in here to try and do, like, a little bit of chip damage. But, honestly, I think I'm better off reviving Embor because he's probably going to be my best bet for this thing. Um, I know Cub Chew's not going to be able to do anything. Neither is Salzbuck. And, yeah, Embor is basically our only hope. I guess I still have Swana in the back, too, who could be neutral on it. But I definitely would rather go for Heat Crash. Unfortunately, though, Heat Crash, you know, it's the move based around the weight, and Skarmory weighs a lot, so I'm not sure how much Embor will do with Heat Crash. Hopefully, it's still a decent amount, and we'll kind of just play it from there. But we have Bacon fully healed now, so let's see. Um, first, he's going to get the Air Cutter off. That's not as strong as Air Slash, though. Yeah, we're, we're eating that relatively well. And Heat Crash, okay, I think we might take it out here on this next turn. That honestly did a bit more than I thought it would. And Air Cutter does have a good chance of getting a crit, so watch out for that. But there we go. We took it down at the Skarmory. Sweet. All right, so um, that wasn't too shabby at all. So, yeah, we are going to get, what, the Feather Badge, I think, is what it's called. Yeah, there it is. Or no, is it the Jet Badge? Why do I feel like it's the Jet Badge, even though the badge is literally shaped like a feather? But yeah, that is our 6th gym badge, so we are 3 fourths of the way done. 
through the Unova League. Um, kind of sounds crazy. Pokemon up to level 70 will obey you, and there's the team for acrobatics. I already explained it earlier. Um, I don't know if Swana can even get that. It's kind of weird. Like, only certain flying types can learn acrobatics. And then I know there's a couple of non-flying types that can learn it. But yeah, look at that. We get sent straight out the gym. We just, like, busted through those boxes. Now, once you leave, you'll meet back up with Skyla, and then Professor Juniper will return from the Celestial Tower. And basically, this is the point of the, in the game where they let you know, hey, you can come over to the airport and we're going to take a flight over to the east side of Unova. Because, as I've been saying, you don't go through Twist Mountain in the main storyline. Um, this is where Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 really start to defer from Black and White. So, if you're ready to go, head into the airport right there. But, there's one thing I want to do. Um, if you remember, there's this kid in this house who said, like, hey, come back to me once you have the jet badge. Well, now that we have it, um, he said he left a treasure over on the runway. And I'm just going to hop on my bike. And I think it is towards the bottom, maybe? Oh my gosh, this stupid person on the cross transceiver is calling me again. I honestly regret picking it up in Nimbasa City. That's like twice since we've got to, to Mistralton City. But yeah, I, I can't remember where did he leave it. It's somewhere on the runway. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so like bottom left. I should have actually read his dialogue. But it is the TM for Aerial Ace. So, oh yeah, and then he comes running up to you. Jeez, I mean, you didn't have to yell across the entire city. It's not a big city, man. Like, everyone just heard you. But yeah, Aerial Ace, you know, good flying type move. Never misses. However, I already have Fly on Swana, so I don't think I'm going to teach it to him. But that will wrap it up for today's episode. We got the 6th Gym Badge next time. We're taking a little trip over to the west side of Unova, so be on the lookout for that. For now, have a great rest of your day, and until then, deuces!